Welcome to the Missouri Association for College and Mission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. This is a six by six college fair. So each of our six college fair, all of our, each of our six colleges will be presenting for six minutes. You can use the Q and A button on your screen at any time to type questions to our presenters. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for more. And this session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. And with that, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, McAllister College. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, I guess, wherever you are. Uh, zooming in from today. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Really excited to present about McAllister College. My name is Ben Kaufman. I use he, him pronouns. I am one of the assistant directors of admission at McAllister. I'm also a Mac grad, class of 2016, uh, and a few other things on top of that. But that's enough about me. You're probably ready to hear about Mac. Uh, so McAllister is a small private liberal arts and sciences institution located in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, it's actually one half of the Twin Cities, the other half being Minneapolis, right across the river, as you can uh, loosely see in this map here. And at McAllister, our students really do experience the best of both worlds. It's an inspiring academic program, again, following the new liberal arts and sciences, uh, combined with the energy and opportunities of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, academics at Mac are ranked in the top 20 in the United States with small class sizes individualized attention and collaboration, serving as the pillars of the student experience at Mac. Students work side by side with professors, not just in the classroom, but also in laboratory settings, on stage, on study away experiences, or in more than 60 courses that we offer each year that actually partner you directly with a Twin Cities organization or business. Uh, so ranging from your first year experience all the way to your senior capstone courses, intellectual exploration really is the foundation of a Hollister education. And the location really is a big piece of that. Building upon our community a bit, McAllister draws students from every corner of the globe. Uh, we have about 2,100 students, 2,200 depending on the year, and our students represent 98 different countries around the world, uh, as well as all 50 of the United States. And through those interactions with people from different places, different, uh, different things around the world, you really do have the opportunity to find richer discussions and a deeper understanding of the world through those experiences inside and outside the classroom as well. Uh, of course, we also want to build lasting friendships at MAC, which is where our student organizations come into play. We have over 100 student organizations where students enjoy shared interests, express their identity or pieces of their identity, and also expand their talents in various ways. Our organizations reflect the diverse interests of our students and range in focus from art clubs, comedy clubs, dance clubs, gaming clubs, uh, Mac radio. I was a radio DJ at, when, during my time at Mac for a couple semesters, that was really fun. Uh, slam poetry, rocketry, software development, you name it, uh, we probably got. Uh, on top of that, we also have 19 varsity athletic sports. We are a division three institution. Um, our athletic and wellness complex includes a large fitness center, indoor track and gymnasium, natatorium, field house, and more. Uh, and our athletic teams do frequently earn the highest cumulative GPA in the nation. Another thing you should know about our community is that we are a pretty mission-driven institution. We have four core values that really drive everything we do on campus and off campus. Those four values are academic excellence, internationalism, multiculturalism, and service to society. And these really do shape the campus culture and empowers our students to create positive change and make a difference in the world. The United Nations flag has flown on campus since 1950, and student-led social movements have been happening on campus since the 1960s. Both are symbols of McAllister's commitment to a curriculum and to a way of life made stronger through diversity, diversity of many different kinds. Uh, for more info about that, you're definitely welcome to check out our website and see some of the numbers as far as our student body demographics. To get to admissions financial aid, I'm actually going to start at the bottom of this slide and talk about our robust financial aid program, which supports the enrollment of bright, talented students from all around the world. McAllister provides a financial aid package that is equal to 100% of demonstrated need for 100% of our students. Two out of every three McAllister students uh, do receive need-based financial aid, 
uh, and we also provide merit scholarship. About 50% of our students receive merit scholarship each year. Um, the best preparation for applying to MAC is a balanced and rigorous high school curriculum. Uh, we do find it important to take uh, classes in all five academic core subjects. That would be English, mathematics, history or social science, laboratory science, and world language uh, for as many years as possible in high school to give you the most competitive opportunity uh, to showcase what, what you're all about and showcase that liberal arts and sciences curriculum. We evaluate each applicant's record in their high school context, paying particular attention to an applicant's curricular opportunities and experiences, uh, factors such as academic performance, letters of recommendation, essays, leadership experience, and extracurricular involvement are all thoroughly reviewed by the admissions committee. Uh, standardized test scores are not required for admission. We are a test optional institution, but if you'd like to submit your test scores, we are happy to review them as part of our holistic review process. Optional, but if you'd like, you're certainly welcome to submit those as well. You can see our deadlines listed here. Uh, and again, please feel free to visit our website, specifically the apply page for more information about what we look for. Um, and FAQ might be present with that as well. Um, so definitely recommend checking out the website. And just to throw out some other fun facts and figures to wrap up my mini presentation here, uh, about 40% of our US domestic students on campus identify as students of color. About one out of every six McAllister students is an international student. And again, they represent about 98 different countries around the world. On the other hand, another one in six students is from the state of Minnesota, where we're located. So we have a nice balance of a local population, a global population, and everything in between as well. Uh, another one in six students at MAC is a first generation college student. Over 50% of our student body conducts research with a faculty member by the time they graduate. For those interested in STEM fields, 80% of our STEM majors conduct research with a faculty member. About two thirds of our students complete an internship for academic credit by the time they graduate. Uh, our location plays a big role in the availability and accessibility of those internship opportunities. And then about 60% of our students study away from campus for one semester or longer. I myself went to New Zealand, had a fantastic experience. That's definitely worth it. Uh, and finally, to summarize, MAC really has a deep focus on collaboration and exploration, not just for academics, but also professional, personal, and community pursuits. And that's MAC in about six minutes. So with that, I'll pass along, I believe, to Seton Hall. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. And I will, oops, I'm going to go ahead and share my slides. Just give me a moment here. All right. So as Ben mentioned, I am the representative for Seton Hall University. My name is Gina Wright, and I am the regional representative. So I'm actually located in Southern California, and I work with all of our student populations in the Southwest. So Seton Hall University offers the advantages of a large research university coupled with the benefits of a small supportive nurturing environment. We are a small private liberal arts Catholic research institution and we've been developing students in the mind, heart and spirit since 1856. We are located about 14 miles, which is a 35 minute train ride straight into New York City um, in the suburbs of New Jersey. We are a gated community, a very quaint college town. Um, you will see pirate, you know, little pirate graphics in the windows as some of our graduates have opened shops there, which is kind of fun. Um, we're seven minutes from the nearest hiking trail and about 45 minutes to an hour from the nearest beach and an hour from the nearest mountains. So not only do you have access to the thriving city of New York, but also also to nature. So uh, really the best of both worlds in that way. Our graduates have gone on to be Rhodes Fulbright and Marshall scholars, prominent researchers. Uh, fun fact, the one of the founders of ESPN, Bob Lee, is one of our graduates and he still does workshops on our campus. Uh, definitely several judges, lawyers, CEOs, and, and the list goes on from there. So lots of success for our graduates. Our undergraduate population is made up of about 6,200 students. Um, we're pretty split down the middle between male and female students. And we have students that come from all 50 states and 70 countries. So we are quite geographically diverse. Our diversity rate is 45%, um, which is wonderful. We do look for that in the application. Our average class size is 21 and student faculty ratio is 14 to one. And all of our classes are going to be taught by professors. So not graduate assistants, you're going to be learning from the best. Um, which is a nice guarantee. 
Our 90 rigorous undergraduate majors are spread throughout the nine colleges that you see on the right-hand side of this slide. A few standout programs to mention would be our direct entry nursing program, our School of Diplomacy and International Relations um, has a wonderful uh, grad undergraduate option and the curriculum was actually founded in conjunction with the UN, which is really uh, popular. Any program within the School of Business you're going to find has uh, quite a bit of interest and in those classes not only are excellent with a lot of applied learning opportunities on campus, but these students, a lot of them have three to five internships in New York City by the time they graduate, so they are taking full advantage of our location. Something else to point out is that Seton Hall actually offers several dual degree program options, which are pathways that take students straight through to their graduate degree and saving them time and money. A few popular options are listed on the left hand side of this slide, but we do have a BSMD program, several health science options, five dual law pathways with a guaranteed seat in Seton Hall Law as long as you meet certain requirements and a brand new program, um, both in engineering or in AI with Stevens Institute of Technology. In order for our students to balance their rigorous course load, um, we do offer them several wonderful support systems. So we do have tutors and res residents, we have a center for academic success where they can find tutoring and resources and an award winning career center that will help them with things like preparing their resume, preparing for an interview, um, and really applying for their internship opportunities. And you'll actually see a few internship examples on the right of this slide. We actually have over 17,000 connections and that list continues to grow. We are ranked number four in the nation for internships and that's based on quality uh, along with quantity. Um, and our employment rate has actually jumped. It's 93% now on average um, with rates between 95 and 100% in certain colleges on campus, which is really nice. And as a result of all these wonderful um, experiential learning opportunities, internships, our students are graduating um, kind of with a higher salary than other universities and their mid-career earnings then are about 50% higher than the national average, which is nice. You want to make sure you're making a nice income when you leave school. Uh, a couple more fast facts. Our students do like to have fun. We have over 150 clubs and organizations to get involved with. Our model UN team, Shuna, actually ranked number 11th in the nation, actually 11th in the nation last year. Uh, the speech and debate team won over 300 awards in 2019 alone, um, and our other clubs and organizations tend to be very, uh, very involved and have won several awards as well. Uh, we have 14 Division I sports. Our men's basketball team actually Actually, were the regular uh, the conference uh, champions champions last year. We didn't do very well this year, um, but we are typically you know going on to the NCAA tournament, and that's something that our students do enjoy rallying around. We are a big school spirit school, um, and if you're not a Division One athlete but you like to get involved in sports, we actually have about 50% of our body that participates in club and intramural sports, and about 30% of our student body participates in Greek life. We also have the number one ranked leadership program in the country. We received that award five years in a row, and that program does come with personal mentorship for all four years and professional leadership coaching. I'm going to skip over this slide just for the sake of time. Um, in terms of residence life, one fun fact, all of our undergraduate residence halls are air conditioned. So that's something you won't always find and something that we find to be important. And I already mentioned our wonderful tutors and residents. Um, we do have several wonderful services for our students to support them throughout their time at the school. This is our sticker price. However, 98% of our students are receiving scholarship from us, so nobody's really paying that. We do give $100 million away every year in scholarship and grant. And here's a list of our deadlines to close. We are test optional for almost all programs except for JoinMD and anything education. I will drop my information in the chat along with this visiting link, and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Knox College. Hello, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Rosie Worthen and I hope my uh, internet is cooperating this evening. Um, I'm an assistant director of admission here at Knox. I'm also a Knox graduate of 2011. And this slide that I'm showing is actually a picture of our campus. So you can get a, a sneak peek of Knox overlooking the quaint town of Galesburg that we are located in. Um, 
we are located in Galesburg, Illinois. We're in West Central Illinois, about three hours west of Chicago. Have a little handy dandy map with a, a line drawn so you can see that distance. And our current community is about 1,200 students, entirely undergraduate. And those 1,200 students represent 45 states and 49 countries. A third, almost a third of our students identify as students of color. And on top of that, almost 20% of our students are, are international students. What's great about you know diversity, we love sharing these statistics. More importantly, we really focus on inclusivity, being able to have conversations with folks that are different from you, because we truly believe that you learn the most from those that aren't like you. It's one reason why we call a Knox education a human-powered experience, because it's not just the professors bringing their knowledge and skills to the table. It's also the students. It's you. Um, and so there's a sense of empowerment and accountability to do so here. And with that, if you have to try really hard to be bored here at Knox. We have over 100 student organizations um, with varying levels of impact, varying interests. And we're also an NCAA Division III school. We have 18 varsity teams and over 40% of our students participate in varsity sports. So the ability to, to balance your time, your involvements, you shouldn't have to sacrifice aspects of who you are to pursue a particular topic or area. And our average class size is 14. Our student faculty ratio is 11 to one. And another unique thing about Knox is our academic calendar is actually a three term system. We have three 10 week terms and typically you only take three classes at a time. Um, so you're able to really have time to dabble over the course of the year, you're taking nine courses as well as, well as having additional time outside of the classroom to do other things that make you you, to do research, internships, community servants community service, extracurricular involvements. And I will say too, that this past year, we had over 80% of our students live on campus um, this year, still being able to participate, uh, still being able to get involved in classes. And a big aspect of our curriculum is experiential learning. The fact that every single student receives the Power of Experience grant, you automatically have $2,000 in your name to use your junior or senior year. So that's Knox paying you for um, doing an internship in London, doing research projects, implementing a community service project, because we want to put our, where, our money where our mouth is when we say that these experiences are key and important and really make an impact on our academic programs. We have over 60 areas of study, and not only do we offer Bachelor of Arts degrees, we also offer Bachelor of Science degrees for those areas that have the little plus sign next to them on this list if you want that additional concentration or distinction. In addition to these opportunities, we also have pre-professional programs like an early admission partnership with George Washington University uh, Medical School, partnerships with University of Chicago, Columbia University, and Indiana University for Law School, as well as partnerships with some of the top engineering institutions for a dual degree program, and our honors program, which is graduate level research or creative projects for those that want to go on to get advanced degrees to have that level of experience under your belt before you even leave Knox. Um, in terms of after Knox, the majority of our students do go on to graduate school. We are in the top 4% of liberal arts colleges producing successful PhD candidates for STEM. We're in the top 1%, and we usually have a handful of students go directly into PhD programs. You can also notice from this screen, we have very high success rates for our pre-professional programs with our medical school, law school. And we have over 16,000 alumni all over the world um, that are doing amazing things. Not only are we just trying to prepare you for for this ever-changing world to solve problems that don't exist yet, start careers that don't exist yet, but as well as to go off and lead a happy, meaningful life, even in these uncertain times. And they want to connect with current students as well and provide opportunities and network with you too. In terms of the application process, we look at you as a whole person, not just as a test taking robot. As you can see from this pie chart, we really look to see what you've done over the past three to four years to prepare yourself for college. For test scores, we are test optional. We have been since 2006, but we also super score. And it's not required, but it's recommended an interview, a chance to, to sit down and chat and get to know your admission counselor and for us to get to know you, because uh, the more information we have, the better we can paint that picture and be an advocate for you and help you up, help set you up for success. Um, you are automatically um, considered for scholarships with your application for admission. And not only do we look at academic achievements, but we also look at what we call your Knox factor. What else makes you you? So this chart's helpful and not helpful at the same time, because we know that not everyone fits into those little boxes on the left. 
but just know that you can receive up to more than half the total cost of Knox just in scholarships with your application. And you can submit auditions and portfolios, even if you don't plan to take a class in those areas, because we value you as a multidimensional being and we wanna make sure that Knox is a financial fit for you and your family. Um, in terms of connecting with Knox and learning more, there's a ton more to share. Please feel free to copy down my contact information. Check out Knox on our website. We have a ton of virtual opportunities and I look forward to answering your questions in the Q&A. Thanks. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Rocky Mountain College. Hi everyone, so hopefully my screen is sharing now. So my name is Braden. I'm from Rocky Mountain College here and uh, my job title is a senior admissions counselor. Um, really my goal here uh, for the school at the school is to help you navigate these waters of your application process, basically from application to orientation here at Rocky Mountain College. Um, so a little bit about us. We, are found, we were founded in 1878. We're actually older than the state of Montana as a whole. Uh, we are grounded in our liberal arts education, and we have uh, some historical church affiliations. Um, the cool thing about Rocky Mountain College I want to emphasize is really lo being located in Montana. Uh, we have a lot of outdoor recreational opportunities for you to explore. Um, I know lots of people said there's some big towns and big name places close to where they were uh, located, but really what you have access to is right outside your door, getting to the mountains and five, ten minutes away. So if you wanna come visit us and check us out, uh, we have a lot to offer you in those areas as well. Located here in Billings, Montana, we are the largest population in the state of Montana being the biggest city. So we do have the same kind of amenities as places that you're probably used to a little bit closer to home as well. Question I uh, get asked a lot is why RMC? My question back to you would be why not RMC? Based off of our placement ratings upon graduation with all of our students participating, 88% um, of them participating in some kind of internship opportunity, even though we are located in Montana, um, 11 to one faculty or student to faculty ratio and our average class size of 14, you're really getting a personalized touch with your education here. You really get to know your professors on a first name basis who are helping you find those jobs after graduation as well. So um, one other thing uh, that we have offered here at Rocky are our grad level programs in uh, occupational therapy and physician's assistant programs. So we have a very high placement rating for our medical school as well. And we were voted as Montana's best value university uh, just last year. Academics, uh, I know this is a really important part of why you choose to go to college, of course. Uh, we have 52 different majors in 24 fields and 12 pre-professional programs. If I had more time than six minutes, I could go over each and every one of them with you today. But since I don't, uh, feel re free to ask those questions in the question and answer session here, and I can give you more information about what you're interested in studying. Now, a lot of questions do come up about student life, as that's more of what you guys want to know about as students. Um, like I mentioned earlier about our recreational and outdoor opportunities, we do have tons of clubs, uh, student body government here that helps fund these clubs. Uh, the cool thing that is, is really neat about Rocky is that if we don't have a club available to you, you can charter that yourself. Uh, such as last year, we had uh, quite a few students from overseas want to start a fencing club on campus. And so our student body government was able to help fund that and get some fencing uh, started here on campus, which is really cool to interact with the students and be able to do that with them. We do have also intramurals and student leadership uh, opportunities for you and tons of community service opportunities as well here in Montana. Athletics is another big question we get a lot uh, with our 17 men's and women's varsity sports. Uh, whatever you're interested in, um, playing on the collegiate level and the, and the NAIA level in our Frontier and Cascade conferences, or uh, reach out to us in the admissions office and we can get you connected with those coaches to start that recruitment process as well. So this is kind of a breakdown of the real costs of what it takes to come to Rocky Mountain College, us being a private liberal arts college. Uh, of course, that price tag is um, pretty up there, as you can see. But the good thing about that is everybody talks about financial aid, which I'll get to in another slide. Um, and we do have kind of an estimate for books down there as well, if you want to take a screenshot of this. But we offer merit scholarships, which is awesome. So our merit scholarships range uh, from $17,000 uh, a, a year here at Rocky. And that's based off of a couple of criteria that we ask you to turn into us. 
um, once you've applied, being your transcript from your high school and then ACT or SAT scores. Now, I know last year was kind of a, a hit or miss with your ACT or SATs and if you were able to take them, but if you do have those scores, it does help us determine um, a better fit for what those merit scholarships are. And we do offer other needs-based grants and have other scholarship opportunities. On this slide, uh, a list most of our additional scholarships as well with our special talents, uh, which do include our athletic scholarships, an esports scholarship on our campus, as well as music, aviation specific ones. Uh, and then we also offer a $500 visit scholarship if you do come visit during your senior year of high school. Last thing uh, we like to talk about, of course, is that financial aid piece uh, encompassing our what, what I talked about earlier with our costs. So our average financial aid award actually comes out to around $24,000 to $25,000, $24,500 right there on that slide. Um, and there is no financial aid deadline. We do run on open enrollment here at Rocky. So whenever you get that application to us, us as an admissions team, work with our specific territories to help you get through this process as quickly or as slowly as you need to, walking you through each and every individual step. We are, have, uh, all of us take this commitment very seriously to help you um, make sure that uh, there are no financial hurdles in your way to come to any college that you wanna go to. Um, and we take that very seriously here at Rocky as well. So we wanna make sure that you graduate um, with little, little to no debt if we can and uh, get you prepared for the future and the jobs that you will have and be going for as well. Here's just a slide of my contact information. I'll try to post it in the chat for you guys as well. And like I always say, come visit us. Uh, it's a great opportunity if you've never been to Montana to come do that. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on campus in the near future. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is St. Edwards University. Hi everyone, uh, my name is David Brene and I'm the Director of International Admission here at St. Edwards University and we are in the beautiful city of Austin, Texas, which is the capital of Texas. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about St. Edwards and our programs. Uh, as you see here, we have about 3,400 students at St. Edwards. We are a small private Catholic liberal arts university. Um, similar to some of my colleagues today, we have small classes, so around 18 students on average in the class. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have a really close relationship with many of your professors and get to know them very well. So great diversity at St. Edwards as well. We have 57 countries represented. 7% um, of our students come from outside the United States. Um, and, you know, we are a Catholic university. We are very diverse in terms of faith traditions at, this, at the institution as well, about 49 different religions represented. But one of the reasons that students uh, love to look at St. Edwards is Austin, Texas. Um, and Austin is one of the fastest growing cities in the country right now, which is really exciting for us. Of course, we're growing in terms of population, but we're also growing in terms of our economy. And this is really true during the pandemic too. We have folks moving um, to Austin from all over the US um, because a lot of companies are moving here. So our big industry here in Austin is technology. Um, we're home to about over 8,000 different technology companies, um, but we still consider ourselves really a big city with a small town feel. You can get most places you know, from our campus very quickly in Austin. Um, also what's kind of unique and fun about Austin is we're the live music capital of the world. So we're home to some of the world's biggest music festivals um, like Austin City Limits. Um, and then in the spring we have South by Southwest, which is a huge conference for film music and technology. Um, but here's the St. Edwards and this is actually the hilltop where our campus is located. So this is the view from our hilltop overlooking the city of Austin, just about five minutes away from downtown, as you can see. Um, Austin's known as, in, in addition to those things I mentioned just now, one of the best places to live in the United States, one of the best college towns. We're also home to University of Texas, has like 60,000 students. Um, we find that students have a better sort of environment to learn on our campus where you're in small classes, like I mentioned. Uh, in terms of the academic uh, perspective, we call our approach an, uh, sort of a practical approach to liberal arts. So what this means for us is that we want students to gain experience and, and obviously learn in the classroom. In addition to what they're doing uh, in the classroom, they'll be doing internships, uh, pursuing jobs, et cetera. So on the left-hand side of the screen, I've listed some popular majors at St. Edwards, uh, including psychology, business, biology, communications, global studies, and computer science. Um, but we also have some really special programs, I think that are really reflective of some of the industries that are really vital in Austin right now. So video game development is one of those. Um, 
entrepreneurship. We have uh, a lot of venture capital invested into our businesses in Austin. And a lot of our students are starting their own businesses as well. Uh, digital marketing, but we're also known for visual studies and performing arts. So we are um, very strong in theater as well as graphic design uh, and with a new program in animation at the university. I mentioned that we're a Catholic university. We are in the Congregation of Holy Cross. We were founded by Father Edward Soren, who also founded University of Notre Dame in Indiana. So that's our sister school. But what this means for our students is there's a real strong uh, emphasis on religious diversity on campus, a commitment to service, and our sort of slogan of Holy Cross is educating the minds, not at the expense of the heart. So our students are very much committed to service and they tend to be very generous when they come to St. Edward's. Um, residence life, of course, we have over six, I think we have six residence halls, <laughs> yeah, uh, for students to live in uh, at St. Edward's as a freshman. Uh, due, to the, due to the COVID pandemic, um, our students will be having their own rooms and own bathrooms next year on campus, um, and some really, really nice residence halls. Uh, as you can see here in the picture on the right, this is our residential village. It's where the majority of our first year students live. Uh, it's a beautiful structure. So check out our website for more information about residence life. Um, but as I mentioned before, there's going to be opportunities for you to do internships and jobs in Austin. These are some of the companies that we have represented that have hired our students recently. And some of these are homegrown companies too, like Dell Computers and Whole Foods. Um, Amazon has a big presence in Austin right now. We have Apple's largest facility outside of California in Austin. And of course, Tesla has now moved to town. So they have a big factory they're building just about 10 minutes from our campus. So either way, no matter what you're going to study, whether it's business related or not, there's going to be a really viable um, option for you career-wise in Austin. And really quickly about the application process and what that looks like, um, actually there are four ways to apply to St. Edwards. We've just uh, added the coalition application uh, in addition to our St. Edwards application and the Common App uh, and Apply Texas, which is like a common application for Texas. When you apply by December 1st, we're going to waive your application fee and you're automatically gonna be considered for merit scholarships. And we are now permanently test optional. So you do not need to submit an SAT or ACT to us. Here are our academic scholarships. They even go, I think, a little bit higher than this. Um, definitely check out our net price calculator on our website. It's the best way to get a sense of how you'll fare in the process uh, in terms of merit-based scholarships as well as need-based aid. Um, and feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions about that process. And I look forward to working with you all next year. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Carleton College. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Connor Jackson. I work in the admissions office at Carleton College. I also am a graduate of Carleton College from back in 2015. So thanks for being here tonight. Um, appreciate your hanging in here till now and excited to tell you a little bit about Carleton. I will say a word on where we're located, um, a word on academics, and then a little bit on what happens after, right? So starting point there, uh, probably helpful if I advance to the next slide. Carleton is located in the reasonably small town of Northfield, Minnesota, right? Folks bring different references, but 20,000 um, on the smaller side of things, reasonably rural community, a progressive one at that. and somewhat unique for in fact harboring two colleges so not only home to Carleton but uh, St. Olaf College which is located across the river is a little bit bigger than us sitting at about 3,000 students to our 2,000. So college students making up about a quarter of this small town's population which is kind of exciting. I would say another component uh, to sort of consider when you're orienting to our locale we have an 800 acre arboretum uh, this is partial uh, kind of exemplification of some of our natural features. I think a really wonderful place to feel immersed in the landscape around you. Uh, and of course, a, a good portal to the rest of Minnesota that offers really ample opportunities in that regard. So wanted to make mention there and also think it's relevant to note that uh, there are pretty extensive environmental efforts and initiatives taking place at Carleton. We are the first college in the Midwest to have a district energy scale geothermal system, uh, have some windmills some other things that really uh, make us, we, we hope, pretty good shepherds of the environment and also allow students to engage with environmental studies on an academic level as well. So wanted to make mention of those. And speaking of academics, let's hop in there. On to the next slide. Uh, that number three is actually a 
reasonably helpful one as you are orienting and then uh, also thinking of what kind of separates and makes colleges a little bit different. It's a fairly unique feature of Carleton to operate on this trimester model calendar. How that works is we take 10 week terms. So many colleges operate on semesters. Carleton does it a little bit differently. We think there are some pretty great advantages of our trimester schedule. I would say uh, the flexibility it offers students is maybe foremost among them. That pings into students' pretty high rates of studying abroad. About 70% of our students, in fact, go abroad. And then off of that, we see about half of those students even find time to go abroad again. So pretty remarkable rates uh, that also has some interconnection to the portability of credits through those programs. And then without a doubt, financial aid carrying through as well. So um, going to pretty extensive lengths to make studying abroad opportunities accessible to Carleton students and also having some fairly tight integration with professors leading a number of those trips and them having uh, just really strong correlation to what you are studying at Carleton. So I think that is a wonderful feature of our trimester model. I would also note that there is a certain amount of consistency to that, right? You kind of set pace early on in the term and that's something that you are able to structure around throughout the course of your 10 weeks. So you ask any student at Carleton the date, they will tell you what week it is in their trimester. That is how we keep track of time for better or worse. So uh, there's a starting point. We're absolutely a liberal arts college. We will challenge you, stretch you, ask you to take some courses in subject areas that are perhaps uh, a pinch outside of your comfort zone. I think that's a healthy thing. I think the landscape of those requirements, in fact, incurs a certain level of humility among students uh, and encourages some interdisciplinary thinking in ways that will uh, transfer on pretty brilliantly into your time beyond Carleton. So I think uh, another final point I'll kind of wrap up with here is simply that sciences are, are often lost uh, in this landscape of liberal arts. In fact, they are alive and well at Carleton. We opened a new science center uh, when I think was in fact a year ago. Uh, and that is a really wonderful facility to have access to and kind of builds on a pretty uh, pre-existing strength for the college in terms of preparing students to go on to science beyond their time at Carleton. We in fact, among liberal arts colleges, over, I think this is a 50 year data period or so, um, we're first in, in sending science majors on to receive their PhDs. So uh, have a pretty strong track record uh, in that realm and, and think it is a point of strength at the college. So see about half of our students major in the sciences and then about another half in humanities and the social sciences as well. And no student is singular in their academic path at Carleton because of the way that those liberal arts requirements shape your path of study. So I will wrap up now, uh, telling you a little bit about what happens after Carleton. I have already alluded that entails graduate school for a really high percentage of our students. Uh, not all of them certainly going on to PhDs, some going on to other programs that are better uh, fit for their goals, but uh, Carleton's reputation is one that serves them incredibly well in those admissions processes. And then I'll just make final note here. I referenced trimesters and the kind of uh, way that that separates our academic year into three parts. One portion of that actually allows a break that runs from Thanksgiving all the way through December. That is a healthy six weeks. It is a great time for you to go home, rest, relax, be with your family, if that is what you do. We see a number of students particularly moving on into their junior and senior years. In fact, wanting to make use of that time for some internship opportunities. And we offer those in these kind of micro scales. Uh, they are perhaps a, a tad more robust than they might appear at surface level. They're offered exclusively through alumni of the college. We see about 250, 300 of them offered on an annual basis and students even accruing job offers from those opportunities. So those are something uh, that we are proud to offer and I will pause off there and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay, wonderful. Thank you everyone for your presentations. We have about four minutes left. So if I could have you all turn your cameras back on, we'll do a quick round robin here. And the question that I have for all of you is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So if you have a quick thought on that, we'll start at the top with McAllister. 
Awesome, thank you. Uh, this is a great question, and I have first dibs. Um, I'm going to go a little off the beaten path here and, and say when it comes to the college process, the big thing you got to remember is you got to breathe. You really need to take a step back, do some reflection, some big picture thinking. It's not all about the nitty gritty, got to get it done. That's part of it. But you also have to really think about why you're doing those things and, and remember the good teachers can go next um, to keep your sanity through the process as you're gathering so much information. I always recommend creating a spreadsheet with all of the upcoming deadlines, all of the application requirements. Um, you can list everything at the top and gray out boxes that don't apply to one college over another, but it's just a great way to stay organized and to know you can take a deep breath and that you're not missing a deadline for one of the colleges on your list. I think my advice would be is, especially if you're considering or looking at smaller schools, get to know your admission counselor. Use them as a resource. Um, we want to get to know our students. We want to help you find the best fit, whether or not it's our college, even though we hope it's our school, right? Um, but we can be the experts and just so that you know and your family knows that you're not alone in this journey. There are resources and folks here that want to help you. So be as annoying as you possibly can through this journey because it's your future and your investment and we want to help you with it. I'm going to go with the, the tried and true. Visit the campus that you're interested in going to. It's really important. All of the schools that have talked to you today are all great places to even go visit to vacation with your families. So schedule a time to just go out and look at where you're going to be going to college. It's not just that university or that place or that dorm room that you're going to be in. It's that town, that city, that state. So take the time out of your day to do go do that. And I know your high school is going to tell you, no, you got to, you know, you got to be in school all the time. But your senior year, go, go do that for yourself. I would say, and it's actually surprising how many students don't visit a campus. So you're right, Braden. Um, if you're not able to visit a campus, talk to a current student because of course we uh, get paid to say great things about our universities, but talk to a student, they'll tell you the real deal. Um, and you'll be able to connect with someone before you, before you get to the place where you're going, so. Yeah, I'll chime in and uh, maybe bookend a little bit with Ben's advice to breathe, which I think um, is good advice throughout life and uh, uh, particularly this process. But uh, the, your college search can be a time for self-reflection, right? Uh, and I, I would encourage you to make some use of that. I, I know the nature of deadlines and, and things that are due and all of that might uh, compress and, and not always have it feel that way. But um, this is a decision you're making and, and you are stepping into a, a really wonderful opportunity for growth and exploration of your identity. And I think uh, kind of as you are composing these essays and, and going through these interviews and the like, uh, paying some mind to that, right? And, and trying to view them as something that will have reward and value to you beyond solely the, the end of uh, an acceptance to the, the school you wish to attend. Well, thank you to all of you for that, uh, for those wonderful remarks, for your presentations, and thank you students uh, and families for joining us tonight. Uh, when this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted, so please do sign up for more. And again, this uh, presentation will be available as well as many others at the very same website where you signed up for this. And with that, um, have a great night and thanks everyone.